Hello, my name is Carlos Leon. Today I'm going to tell you how to operate the Super Eco Autopilot. To turn on, you have to apply power to the unit. You can do that with the master switch or with one of the switches in the panel. Okay, once the unit is turned on, you will see the diagnostic screen with the serial number and the version. You have to wait about 20 seconds for the unit to turn on. Being a six pack instrument, the unit will always turn on and it will show all the instruments available to you. As soon as you turn it on, the instrument face will appear on the LCD screen of the Super Eco. The autopilot has two menu buttons at the top, L and R. R is the main menu and L is the secondary menu. Then we have a push knob where we can select headings and altitudes and barometric pressures, etc. The Super Eco instrument has a compass rose, an altitude indicator in the center, artificial horizon, altitude, airspeed, turn coordinator, and vertical speed. If you connect your Super Eco to an external device like a GPS or an Arink 429 enabled radio, you can use your CDI needle in the center. To do that, just press the push knob for one second and then move the needle to the desired heading. The heading is shown on the top left hand corner of the screen. If you connect the Super Eco to a Naring 429, you will be able to see the glide slope on the two ends of the screen, on the right and the left. By pressing R, we enter the main menu of the autopilot. Here you will be able to activate your autopilot in the different modes. Level flight is the best way to activate your autopilot. It will get you out of an unusual attitude and it will also maintain your present altitude and heading. Heading will activate the autopilot in heading mode and follow the heading that you pre-selected with your heading bug. GPS is the GPS mode that will allow you to follow a pre-selected flight plan in your external GPS. In that mode, the autopilot will follow the CDI needle. You will be able to intercept radios inbound or outbound. Altitude will allow your autopilot to capture the pre-selected altitude. It will do it at your pre-selected vertical speed or pre-selected airspeed. Below altitude, we have two options, indicated airspeed and vertical speed. If we choose indicated airspeed, we can select the speed at which we want to climb. If we choose vertical speed, then we select the climb rate or descent rate. When you press service mode, second from last, you enter a password and the autopilot will go into the service screen. Last in the menu is shutdown. If you're operating on the batteries, you can shut down the autopilot. It will shut down after three seconds. The L key is the sub menu. The presentation will depend on the service mode. With service mode password zero, you have the daily settings. Daily settings such as GPS VLOC, CDI source, your trim, and your auto envelope protect. On page two, you have your hold menu. You can do hold, the hold direction, the hold course, and activate and disactivate hold. On page three, you have the arc menu. Your end course, your DME distance, and the arc direction, counterclockwise or clockwise then you can activate your arc. Okay, once you activate the autopilot, you will see two green triangles, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the left indicates that you're flying a heading or track. The one on the right indicates that you're following an altitude. In this case, a vertical speed, because you see the, the green triangle on the vertical speed. If you choose indicator airspeed, you will see the green triangle just above the selected airspeed. When the autopilot is following an external GPS, you will see the waypoint on the bottom left hand corner of the screen and the CDI needle will turn on following that waypoint. To turn off the Super Eco, kill power from the master switch and the Super Eco will shut down after 60 seconds. Now we're going to walk around the airplane and show you the pre-flight checks and safety aspects of the whole autopilot. Flutter, as usual, I want to remind everyone about flutter. Uh, flying surfaces need to be balanced and trim tabs need to be balanced. Before each flight, check the integrity of your trim tab that is well adhered to the airplane. The push rods are nicely fitted to the servo. All the mechanism is working. Okay, then go back turn on the master switch and check if the servos are actually connected. 
To do this, you must make sure that the servo kill switch is in the on position. The servo should be engaged. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, send us an email at info at aircraftautomation.com.